All right, kids, gather round. I'm about to tell you the tale of Finding Nemo. Marlin, the clownfish, lived with his wife, Coral. They lived happily together until she was fucking murdered. Marlin then takes his son, sends him to a concentration camp, blaming him for his wife's death. Nemo then wanders out to the restricted zone of the camp, where he is gunned down and killed. The end. Well, kids, what did you think? <laughs> And that's not even half as off as the play at my school was. Alright, so the only reason I went to this play in the first place was because we were forced to see a preview of it because it was being shown during school and most of the band was in it and I'm in band class so I had to see it. My buddy and I were reading the script and it says a bird straight up overdoses on pills. So I went to see the way they managed that. Alright, so it wasn't about Finding Nemo, it was about Horton Hears a Who. It was a Dr. Seuss themed play and that was the story they wanted to tell. So you know the book, right? And the movie? Well, fuck that, it's nothing like that. Instead of reading the book and watching the movie to understand the story, they read half of the book, took LSD, and then watched the movie while eating pot brownies. And here's what that interpretation would sound like. The plot. So it starts off with a kid sitting in the middle of the stage, and the cat in the hat's the hat... The cat in the... Hat's hat... The hat in the... Cat the... The cat in the... The cat in the, the cat's hat. The kid goes over there, and the cat comes out and starts singing about the things you can think can be the best thing of your life or be fucking horrifying and give you PTSD. But it's usually somewhere in between. So the cat sings this, then it cuts to Horton just vibing. Then he hears the help sound from the dust, so he starts talking to the kid. By the way, remember the depressed kid Jojo from the movie? Yeah, he's wearing a bright yellow shirt and khaki shorts and is played by a girl. And then when they both finish talking, this bird just starts checking out Horton and straight up wants to fuck him. She starts singing about how she's only got one feather for her tail and how it's not hot. But then these six other birds come out and start singing to her. The leader bitch bird, which is how I'm just going to call her, tells her, oh, I got the best tail, your tail sucks, you'll never be as hot as me or my tail, and I have shit to show off and you don't lol. Then goes on to tell her that she went to this doctor who gave her, quote, tail growth pills and tells her to go get some. So the horny bird just goes to the doctor who tells her, nah, bro, your tail is fine for your kind of bird. She flips the fuck out and assaults the doctor into giving her the pills. She takes like 30 and gets the hottest tail in existence. Oh my god! Then she gets hooked on him and after she leaves, it's like, I just need one more pill and I'll be good. Just one more pill. So then she's doing all the drugs and it cuts back to the Who's where the mayor and his wife, both played by women for some reason, are hating Jojo because he invented new things in school and made the teacher drop her glasses because of which is somehow his fault and get pissed that he's imagining shit. So they send him to take a bath where he gets pissed at the cat for making him think and get in trouble and the cat's all like... <laughs> So then Jojo starts thinking about if the bath was a pool and had fish and shit. He gets lost in thought, fucking floods the house, makes the ceiling cave in on itself, and destroys everything in the house. But when his parents come in and are all pissed at him, they're not pissed at the fact that he destroyed the house. They're pissed that he was thinking again. So they say they'll deal with him tomorrow, the pieces of shit, and are talking to each other about how to fix him. And the cat, the cat gives them a pamphlet about military school, which the parents are fucking willing to do. So they wake him up early as shit the next morning morning, then a general walks in and starts this whole thing, who is also played by a woman, and then and there is sent off to military school. In training, the general makes everyone line up, where he goes down the line and says what each one did wrong. Uh, there's one who couldn't color inside the lines, another who hummed in the shower, and one who had an opinion. When I saw the preview of this, I was just thinking of Twitter, but when my brother and I saw the show, he said it was just straight up communism, and I was like, holy frick, you're right! So now there's communism and drug abuse in a kid's book. So it then cuts back to the bitch birds again who are singing about how great the leader bitch is when the drugged horny bird comes in and says, Hey everyone, go look at my new tail! And they are astonished at it. Also, if you take every time I say tail and replace it with the word ass, this becomes a whole different story. Watch it back and do that and see the new story. But anyway, they do that, then the monkeys come to fuck with Horton and his clovers a bit. He's all like, uh, give it back, and they're all like, <laughs> Yeah. So Horton runs after them and the kangaroo, which, by the way, is the only good singer in the whole musical, is like, I'm gonna give it to this emo-ass motherfucker and he's literally gonna fuck this clover to pieces. Horton, Horton's all like, no. The dude throws it into a field of clovers and Horton's again all like, no. And instead of leaving it where it'll be safe because no one will ever go down there, he goes down and looks for it. 
The cat comes out and tells the audience how lucky we are in the form of song, then Act 1 ends. Now at this point, me and my brother are already pissed and confused as fuck at this, and we thought it was almost over, but nah, that was just a halfway point. We consider leaving, but I want to see the bird overdose, and I paid 20 bucks for this, so we're suffering through this motherfucker. Act 2 starts with the leader bitch bird sitting in a tree with her egg, and Horton comes along, and she's like, Hey, yo, Horton, my husband left me, and I have this egg that I don't want. Can you watch it for just the afternoon? Just, yeah, just, just the afternoon. I mean, it, it, it won't be that long. It's just one afternoon. You know, this bird gave such little of a shit about her kid. She could have been like, Oh, my kid's got a respiratory virus? Oh, hot dog. Horton, being the dumb fuck he is, says, Yeah. And she leaves to go on vacation after abandoning her fucking child. So Horton puts that egg far up his ass and sits on it for, and I quote, 52 weeks, which according to Google is a whole ass year. So that dumb fuck sat on this egg that isn't even his, not moving, not eating, not looking for the who's, which was his main plan in the first place, FOR A FUCKING YEAR! And you might be thinking, oh, so she comes back after a year, right? WRONG! Horton gets fucking poached by hunters, then sold into slavery at a fucking circus. And you remember the horny bird that wanted Horton dick that would kill her if she tried to eat said dick? She could have saved him, but her ass got too fat from the pills that she couldn't. That's literally a whole point in the play. Her ass was too fat, she couldn't save Horton. Anyway, Horton's living the dream in slavery for a bit, then the horny bird comes and is like, Hey yo, Horton, sorry my ass is so fat I couldn't save you, so I did the only reasonable thing and fucking cut my tail off, okay bye. Then the leader bitch bird comes back from vacation because she's bored and goes to the fucking circus. And she sees Horton who's all like, I offer you a nice egg in this trying time. I warmed it up in my ass for a whole year and it's fucking hard boiled at this point. She says, well look at you Mr. Big Guy, you've done such a great job, I'm gonna let you keep it because you're so cool and awesome and awesome and cool and bye. So he's like, okay that's fair, I guess I am pretty cool. All the while, the Who's are dying or something, and everyone needs that Horton drug that Horton must bring every time he comes because they're all dying when he's not there. But you know who really does die? So you remember that military part, right? Where Jojo was sent into communism? Yeah, uh, well it turns out he was also sent into fucking war to fight. All because he decided to think on his own. So he's fed up with the general's shit, gives him his shit, says, fuck you, I'm leaving. The general says, bruh, you're going into a minefield, you're gonna die. Not when I'm the main character, and I have the power of IMAGINATION! So then the general goes to his mayor and his wife, Jojo's mom and dad, and says, Yeah, your kid's dead, here's his shit, cape okay, ah. The parents are all shocked and sad about it, so they're crying. It cuts to Jojo in this red void that I thought was hell at first, then it changed to gray, so I thought it was purgatory, but then his parents show up for some fucking reason, and he's still alive after stepping on a motherfucking landmine. This fetus of a child stepped on a landmine and lived. For the love of God, he could have got hit with a flying ice cream truck. And live! This kid is the fucking juggernaut or something. But anyway, remember Horton? Yeah, me neither. Well, somehow he escaped slavery. They never really explained how he did that, and he has to get the clover for some reason, where the entire jungle is putting him on trial in a full-ass courtroom in the middle of the jungle. So everyone thinks he's insane, which should give him legal reason to be innocent by claiming insanity, but the only one who defends him is the horny bird who everyone ignores, then the judge declares him guilty and they're gonna boil the clover and him to death. So then the normal ending happens, the who's yell and shit, everyone hears and it's a mega happy ending yay. Then the egg that Horton had hatches and it's a fucking elephant bird hybrid freak of nature that everyone awes at. Then the play ends. After the show, when the curtain fell, the cast went all like, whoa, and fell over, and I turned to my brother and said, finally, they're dead. That's what we've been waiting for. That also reminds me, in the parts where the Who's are singing, the Grinch is a part of it, and he looks like Shrek. So what did we learn from this? We learned that in the children's book, Horton hears a Who, there's communism, horny birds that want to fuck elephants, death via landmines, slavery, and the death penalty. I hope you all learned as much as I have. When my brother and I called my buddy afterwards because we needed to vent this to somebody, we were describing what happened, and we told him that it was Horton hears a Who, and even he started losing his shit on how bad it is. So kids. What you should really take away from this is if you go to a school play, take someone with you to make fun of it, and only watch the movies and read the books about Dr. Seuss. God, this place sucked. Okay, bye, have fun. Oh yeah, this can burn in hell too.